What's going on, man? What's going on? All right. Who I live in that Vegas life? <laughs> Not too bad. How is that Vegas life, man? Is it any different from you know the Dallas life or the the, the New York life? Yeah, man. Uh, the Dallas life for me is a challenging one because the only time I'm in Dallas is when I'm training at Fortis, and that training is always rock solid. I mean, my, we, I I left on a Wednesday, so I trained there hard Tuesday night. And then Wednesday morning, and man, Tuesday night was a push, not only for me, but I know my boy Jeff Neal is fighting uh, Vicente Luque soon. And then Ramez, he's fighting on that same card, and Ramez is a beast. He was he was doing all sorts of crazy stuff. It was cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, looking at, you know, your last fight, it was in December. So it's been quite some time, man. Usually you get around three fights a year, and you usually fight in like the first quarter of most years. Why did you take so much time away? I just need some time to heal up a little bit. I actually got some stem cells to see if that would uh, kind of help something out. And it, and it helped for a little while, but nothing too crazy. But I just wanted some time to, you know, just have some fun and coach and run the business. The gym's going well. So just time off is cool. The stem cells, sometimes it doesn't work, it seems like, from hearing it from other fighters too. Yeah, so like I don't expect a miracle with it, but I did hear it. It reduces inflammation, and it and it certainly did. So like it let me be comfortable for quite a while, but it only lasted about six months. What kind of treatment you know that that works? Like you know you've been through so many training camps, you've been training for so long that you know that this type of like um, I guess procedure helps with injuries or you know some advice to younger fighters that are coming up. Man, uh, durability is like a is like a genetic factor. Thankfully. Uh, my, my durability has always held up. Even when I did get injured, like things tear, I was always able to work around it. And then I'd known some really, really gifted fighters and they just like couldn't make it through fight camps or they just couldn't keep a career because they couldn't stay healthy. And I was always like fortunate for my, for my durability because I train a lot. Like I probably train more than I should just because I enjoy the martial arts. And, uh, and yeah, taking care of the body is number one for sure. So like, man, like when I was younger, I wish I'd have eaten a little cleaner, more consistently. But you know, you live and you learn. And I've been on like a pretty pretty healthy path ever since I got signed to the UFC. So it's been about six years now. I've never shot up in weight since and have had pretty minimal surgeries, you know, considering. And, you know, with, uh, with, uh, what is it, with the injuries, and you said that you had to work around them during camps. How many camps, if you could put a number on it, have you done that in the past? Man, I'd say maybe half. Honestly, the last, like last year, all three of my fights, uh, they were, they were good. I was a hundred percent this fight. I'm, I'm damn near a hundred percent as well. It's cool. The older I get, I've also been doing a lot more strength and conditioning and I think that's helping a lot. But, uh, you know, like after fights I would, you know, I would, I wouldn't eat so clean, but now I, I eat clean just so I can feel good. So I have like no desire to, to eat, eat anything really bad. I mean, it's nice cause I don't want to get my butt kicked in the gym and man, if I have a, if I have a bad day of eating and I'll feel it the next day in some hard sparring and it's just not worth losing those rounds. You fought in Austin, you fought in Houston a few times, but never in Dallas. You know, what makes Dallas different from all the other cities in Texas? Uh, it's cool. I train there, so I'm actually pretty familiar with that city. I make the drive from Houston to Dallas often. I mean, there and back every week in camp, out of camp, just when anytime I can go to help the guys out. But uh, it's cool. It's cool because that, that city to me is like martial arts experience city. Like, I don't think I've ever been there just to enjoy the, the town. So every time I go there, it's to handle business. So like when I'm driving up, you know, I get I get my head in the right in the right mode to to train hard and really, you know, absorb as much of the martial arts experience from coach as possible, and you know, do my best to win those rounds. And you know, and then you know, I usually get, it's funny. This is probably the last time, but I stay in a pretty crappy hotel when I'm there. And my last experience over the week was so bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll dish out whatever money I have to to stay in a better spot. But I started going there early, early on with one of my friends, and that was like his go-to hotel, and he wasn't in the UFC. And uh, so I just had like a habit of staying there. It was at a La Quinta, about 100 bucks a night, but dude, never again. My, la my experience last time was bad. I mean, it was loud. The AC didn't really work. The bed was dirty. The fridge didn't shut. I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty funny. It was, it was nice. So I was only there for a night because I had to head up to Vegas. But, uh, but yeah, I think uh, my, my status as a hotel stayer is elevating as I as I get older. So, and that's something my coach was talking about. And he's like, "You'll understand when you're older." And I'm starting to understand that. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, yeah, stay away from the hundred dollar hotels. That's I guess yeah, that's the best yeah, advice. That's a, the young, that's a young man's game. <laughs> yeah. Now you know you're you're writing a 
a solid three fight win streak, man. You've won the last seven out of ten. I think a lot of people forget that as well. You know, man, they forget that you've won the last seven out of ten, man. So when when I expected the next matchup, I expected someone with name value because you fought a few guys like Anthony Pettis, Cerrone, name value, or higher in the rankings, man, because you're on a streak. When they offered you Matt Spessenberger, what did you think? I actually liked the matchup. I remember seeing him fight, and I was thinking, I was like, I'm going to fight him one day. So I've been watching his fights. I'm prepped for that. And, uh, and and I could not imagine somebody they would offer me that I was that I would not be about fighting. Um, you know, he's 4-1 and one in the UFC, which is good. Uh, you know, he's he's more of a striker, which is always fun. And uh, and I was just happy to get on that Dallas card because I just, you know, I, I thought the card was full. And sure enough, you know, we, we get a message from Sean saying they're going to put me on that card. So I was like, hey, cool. Anyone works. I mean, really anyone does. And uh, and I also ha- I, I like comb through the roster often, especially like the top 20. And uh, and I actually I had I had, I, had, I had made a small list to ask, but the guys were either booked or out. So like once I knew the options were limited, like so most of the guys were booked. And then a uh, one fight that I'll keep under wraps for now because I hope it happens in the future. He was uh, coming off an injury, and he's uh, he's he's just an exciting guy. So, you know, the rankings are cool. Uh, you know, but it's one of those things we get paid the same. So just so long as I have a you know a, an, an opponent, you know, a dancing partner, I'm um, I'm happy. So man, I'm happy. Speaking of uh, being paid, you know, recently they they uh, disclosed the 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 pay for PFL and Anthony Pettis, the guy you fought. He's making 750k a fight, man. That is, that is awesome. Like that is something that I love to hear. That you could step out of the UFC and make that kind of money, man. What does that say about the industry as a whole? Yeah, I mean that's cool. I I just showed that to my boy Ricky today. I was like, I don't. I was like, how are they paying him this much? I mean that's awesome. And it was funny. We were actually sitting at the PI, ready to get back on the shuttle, and and Anthony Pettis walked in. And, uh, and I was like, man, I wonder what he's doing here. And Ricky was like, man, he's champ. He's legend status. He probably gets, you know, really anything he needs. And that's true. And to be fair, he's not like, the, you know, any, any, any lightweight who's come through. You know, he was on a Wheaties box. He got the Showtime kick. He was champ. He's done a lot for MMA. You know, he did a lot for the UFC. So, you know, he, he does have a, a good value. And I'm just happy to see him get it. Honestly, man, that's really cool. That was off a loss, too. I mean, <laughs> that's, man, that's cool. You know, I'd, I'd show up and. You know, I'd freaking fight anybody, anybody at any weight class for that much money. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. I'd and go in there to try to win that too. I mean, yeah, yeah. Why cool. not? Why not? You know, if if that's if that's the promotion that fits you and it fits your goals, you know, why not go over there and, and chase after the million dollars? And it shows you that there's options for fighters now. You don't. If the UFC is your dream, no one could change your dream, right? But if money's your dream, there's a lot of options. Yeah, and I, to, for the record, I absolutely love what the UFC is paying me. I'm getting paid good, good money. I mean, I mean, you know, three fights in a year, and I'm 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 looking at a million bucks. I mean, it's I have zero complaints and a lot of compliments. I am I am not upset, and I love being in the UFC. This is fight number sixteen, you know, year number six. I'd love to see fight number thirty-two, year number twelve, you know, here in the future. You want to do that, Jim Miller, huh? You want to live yes, like that? Yes, he, he is my. Uh, that's my standard. I know. I know it's not a good standard because he's. <laughs> got the most yeah. but like that is my that is my goal i want to be i want to be jim miller when i'm older yeah man uh, that's not a bad goal to have you know what I mean? that's not a bad target to be someone like no. that you know and he's still doing it like he's still finishing guys young guys he, veterans anybody he fought that nicholas moda guy and yeah. talked him out. that's yeah. a young up and coming dude he he went you know put it on cowboy i mean dude jim miller's the man that's my that's my uh that's who i strive to be like career-wise Awesome. And, uh, you know, going back to your opponent, you know, he's recently he's either finished his fight really early or went to a decision. What does that say about him as a fighter? Yeah, he's a mixed bag. Um, You know, he's 10 and three. He got signed to the UFC at six and two, which is early. All of his amateur fights were at 205. And then a lot of his early pro fights were at 185. And he seems like he's finding a good home at welterweight. And what's crazy, he's like not an outrageously huge welterweight. I'm sure, and I'm I'm planning on him to be very physical, like very strong, and uh, which again, like who's not, you know? So that's not anything too crazy. But uh, he he's 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 you know relatively green, but but has had success. And uh, there's there's not a lot of big holes in this game, you know. It's it's one of those fights, you know. I feel like I can use some veteran tricks and just and just really apply a good a good pace and a good technical game 
but I, this is not an easy fight. I don't think anyone sees this as an easy fight either, but, uh, but it's a good one. It's a challenging fight, and, uh, and it's one I'm taking serious. I'll tell you, I've always trained hard at Fortis, but having Ramez on the same card as me and Carlos Diego Fiera, we're all in the training room together, and having Jeff Neal fight a week later, dude, there are some dogs. We got some, there are some, there are some good training rounds going on right now. And it was actually nice, man. I had such a hard Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm here in Vegas, so I don't got to finish out this week that strong. So I'm like resting today. I got a, just a good, like, just cardio session tomorrow. It's nice to be able to recover so I can go back in the next week 100% and do that again. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to imagine, like, you, Ramiz, Diego, and then there's Jeff just killing each other every day. But to the benefit of, you know, you guys going out there and, uh, and, and finishing your fights or performing really well, can you put words into it? Like the, the environment, like the, the vibe that you get off that? Yeah, you know, I always enjoy training to get like a little, little nervous before sparring. And uh, I'll tell you, it's Coach Safe. He's the best. I mean, I'm not going to give any, any training, training secrets away. He'd kill me. But uh, it's just his motivation and just his energy. And uh, it's just cool. It's nice having somebody to, to like, to want to fight for, you know, it's nice to have instruction and direction. I mean, I really, I watch videos all the time about, you know, old wars and just what, you know, what human society was like, you know, hundreds of years ago, and you had to fight and kill to survive. And it's just cool to have a commander and somebody tells you how to do it. And if you don't do it, you fail. And, and it's just, you know, like winning, winning is the goal and we are pushed to win no matter what. And when you get two, two guys who are training to win and then fighting to win, that's the only option. It just makes for hard work and, and good energy. And we take care of each other too. I mean, like, you know, we're, we're, we're working hard, but we're making sure we're, we're, we're staying safe. No high risk, crazy moves. It's just hard, consistent work. And it's, it's fun, man. You know, that's up to that's up to safe to to give the amount of information but yeah the training's great yeah i love how uh safe runs his ship you know what i mean it's a little different from everybody else but effective and i feel like the word effective is the most important it is effective and it's not it, it's not for all fighters now granted i mean the, the the fighters thrive there but if you're if you don't got thick skin you're gonna be gone quick i mean quick it's it's cool i enjoy it i i, I don't even want to say it because i'm sure he'll watch this but I enjoy the hardship. I mean, I need that. And uh, it's cool. It's yeah, cool. So out, shout out to Safe, man. One of the best out there. Now, training camps, they can be grueling, demanding physically, emotionally, mentally. You know, you've been through so many of them, you know, and that's not even factoring in like the outside distractions that fighters have to, you know, deal with. What days are the most difficult for you nowadays in, in camp? Um, so Tuesday's the, the, the hardest sparring day. Um, and there's quite a bit of travel in this fight camp, but it's not that different. And, and honestly, I got that drive down, uh, man, I'm running my gym and that's awesome. I, I got no complaints. I got no complaints. That's why I also like going up to Dallas. Cause like coach even told me early in camp, he's like, Morono, you know, you're on a three fight win streak. Your last couple fights, you were able to kind of do your thing and win all, all three rounds, both fights, you know, excluding the cowboy fight. And he's like, I got to make sure you're not getting comfortable. So I'm going up there to get uncomfortable. And, and I'm getting uncomfortable. It's cool. And I just like, see, I feel like coach always knows what to say in terms of motivation and uh, and in terms of uh, transparency. Like, he'll he'll tell me how it is. And I need that. And, you know, back home, it, it's no one, no one really, not not has the ability to do it, but no one no one really has, like, the 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 position or the vision to do it. And then uh, all my coaches back home, I love, but they're like also my friends and I've been training with them for a while. We all like run classes together and uh, it's just, it's just good, man. It's that's the, the most challenging part is, is going up to Fortis to be pushed and be challenged. And the, um, I, I feel like, I feel like that's being achieved at an A plus, man. That's it's, it's fun. This is a fun fight camp because this is a hard fight camp. This is a harder fight camp than, uh, than, than, the last several fight camps I've had in recent memory. So how do you expect to uh, extend this win streak, man? Because I feel like if you get this win, and if it's like a highlight reel or something like that, they're going to pop you up with a really, really good name, I think. That's what's going to happen. But how do you expect to perform in this one? Yeah, I'm just looking to put on a technical master class, use my, use my veteran experience, 
and uh, and just you know kind of fight my fight and just and take it everywhere. You know, in his last fight, he uh, he wrestled a little bit more than normal, so it's just one of those things. I, I don't want to have too many expectations, and I always plan for a grind and a third round finish. Like I, I expect to go, expect to go. You know up to 15 minutes and, and, you know, for me mentally, personally, I like a third round finish. That's what I'm shooting for. All right. Um, one last thing, man, I just wanted to pick your brain about is, uh, Cowboy Cerrone. He just recently retired, you know, and, uh, you, since you shared the cage with him, just your reaction to him leaving MMA for Hollywood. Yeah, that's cool. I like Cowboy. He, I, I wish him the best. I thought the matchup with Joe Lowe's almost so perfect. Honestly, the rematch with Miller wasn't bad either. Um, it would have been nice to see him catch a dub before before he uh, called called it, but I mean he just one of those he just legend you know how it goes. It was I was happy to be able to to share the octagon with him and you know that's my claim to fame. Anytime I'm ever anywhere and someone's like, do you fight? I'm like, I do fight. I'm like, do you know who Cowboy is? And everyone's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I fought him, you know, last last May. And it's just that's like kind of my claim to fame for now, and and I hope to have many notable moments like that in my career as he's had many notable moments in his yeah definitely. he said in his post-fight speech that he uh he didn't enjoy it anymore you know have you ever had those moments when you didn't enjoy it to the point where you're like man should i continue my career or not uh man thankfully honestly i have not i uh i do a lot of like perspective work i i, I try to like look look at life through the eyes of many different perspectives and I'm very grateful for uh, for my physical attributes and in my family and my job and like my location and just uh, I'm very grateful for for what I get to do you know I set my own schedule I run my own business and I get to do martial arts I get to pretty much like hang out with my friends and people I admire and who admire me all day long and uh, and if and if the occasional injury is all I have to endure then, then so be that. But even, even that, I've, I've been on a good, healthy streak lately. And, uh, and no, I've, I've never not enjoyed it. There have been many days I have been laying in bed with my wife before I go to sleep, like excited to wake up and go train the next day because I have like a fun day or a fun session plan. And, uh, and, and my brother asks me all the time. I'm very close to my brother. He's a, 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 a very a successful man himself, all, all self-made, taught himself how to code, is like a tech whiz, very fortunate, very wealthy now, all from super hard work. And he's like, how do you still do this so much every day, every year? And I'm like, I don't know, but it's better and better as the, every single day. I'm like, you, I, was, he asked, I was like, you asked me this question five years ago, and it's, I'm significantly more into it now than I was then, and I didn't know that was the thing also ricky can understand this now and i would tell i would tell my fighters this before they got to the ufc i said there is no motivation like ufc motivation and and that is true and like the moment fights are booked seeing my my, my show money and my win money i mean with with a fight and a win that's like three years worth of work you know in 15 minutes and that just that that does a lot for my family it does a lot for my gym and a lot for myself and it's it's weird it's one of those things like the more money you make you know, you, you have to like invest it and do this and that. And with my fight money, I want to hoard it. And then I want to guard it like a dragon guards treasure. I hate having to spend it on investments and, and, and this and that because it just appreciates. And I just want to like guard it and do nothing with it. And just, you know, it's, it's one of those things that's weird because the only thing I spend money on is gear. I just buy a bunch of gear after I fight. And I usually give it to my training partners and I always upgrade my gear. You know, some guys like their shoes. I like my gear. I like the Venom shin guards and my ringside gloves, and I just buy like boxes of them. And the moment there's any issue with any piece of gear, I'll, I'll replace it. And I'll usually give that gear away. But uh, I, I, it's like the Joker in the Batman. He's like, uh, the stuff I like is cheap, and he burns all the cash. Now, granted, I would never do that, but so long as I can train with good gear, man, I'll be happy. Well, then, you know, alert out there for everybody that trains with you. You know, wait, because you might get some free <laughs> gear. <laughs> right well anyways man you're back in action july 30th ufc 277 in dallas it's gonna be a crazy matchup alex thank you so much man for taking the time oh man thank you so much always fun to do interviews with you